Hey guys, Steve here from sellthehelper.com and I wanted to know, answer another question today from a patron over on Patreon. And the question was, can you tell us about what are the most common errors students make and some solutions? So what I'd say first is if you don't know about Patreon, I've got a Patreon page and that's over at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Beal. And it's for Sell to Helper specifically. It's got my name, but it's to give a chance for people like you who appreciate this channel to support what I do with Sell to Helper. And you can pledge a small contribution to take Sell to Helper to the next level so I can help more and more people. And I answer questions every fortnight on here from supporters. So if you want to check that out, there'll be a link in the video description. So to come back to answering the question, um, it's a bit of a tricky one because it really depends, first of all, what is their first language or their L1. So every different language causes different errors for students when they're learning English because of things like interference, as in confusion that's caused by their first language. Now, I've talked about it before. If I just show you this book, Swan and Smith's, well, they're the editors at least, Learner English. This is a really good go-to book and it looks old. This is the really old version. It looks slightly different now, but this is a great book, uh, especially for focus on the learner assignment. And also it tells you, you know, all kinds of languages. It tells you what are the most common errors. So if you have a look at this book, you can get it cheap used on eBay or Amazon. And again, I'll put links to that below. It will help you for the assignment. You can reference it and it will help you prepare for key Oops, sorry <laughs> key problems with your students language if you know what language they're going to be which leads on to a second point for example if you're going to do your CELTA in a country that's not you know an anglophone country let's say I don't know Saudi Arabia Italy whatever Thailand you have a good idea that most of the students will speak the language of that country so you can focus on them so you have a slight advantage in terms of preparation you can focus on that if you're going to do it in somewhere like the UK, Australia, Canada, whatever, then the chances are they could be from anywhere. Yes, in certain areas you might know what kind of people it will be, but you can't be as certain. So you can make educated guesses, but that leads into the next point, which is all about the questions you ask before the course. Now, I've done a blog post on this. Again, I'll put a link below called Seven Essential Questions to Ask Before You Start Your Course. And this was one of them. If you want, you can download the PDF checklist with the questions. And again, that will be in a link below, but it helps you to identify these kind of things before you start. So you could ask the CELTA Center what kind of students they have, as in who will you be teaching? Because they usually know, right? When I did my CELTA course, they were mostly refugees and asylum seekers. Now they were from all over. I did my focus on the learner assignment on a student from Eritrea, which is not a country I knew anything about. And the language I think was Tigrinya. Again, never heard of it before. Just about found something online and a few things about the language. So for me, it wouldn't have worked, but you might be able to prepare for that. So check out the download and the article I mentioned. That should help you in that respect. And I suppose then another point, solutions really if you start looking into concept checking questions, this sounds like a strange one, I know, but what these are based on, these are based on the tricky points of language. Now, maybe I should step back a bit. Hang on a second. <laughs> when you're looking at grammar, for example, things which are exceptions, things which are confusing. Let's say I was writing something earlier about the present perfect. Why do we use been? Why do we use gone? Those kind of things are going to confuse people because it's a strange rule. Yeah? Why do you say gone and been? It, it's just a bit bizarre. However, if you're looking at those in advance and as a teacher, you're finding them a bit confusing, the students are clearly going to find it confusing as well. So if you hone in on exceptions to the rules, maybe if you're a non-native speaker, anything you found confusing when you were learning a language, chances are your students will as well. Okay, So there's all kinds of things you can do there. You know, things like why, oh, <laughs> so many things you could do. But like I said, bizarre rules, exceptions to the rule. And then 
those will help you to form the concept checking questions which I talked about earlier. So if you focus on them, it'll help you predict some errors and your concept checking questions, which you can actually have a go at writing for certain points as practice, specifically grammar points, will help you to then think about solutions as well. So that would be what I would suggest. I hope that was clear enough. Leave any questions you have in the comments below or anything you'd like me to cover in future videos and I'll try and do my best. And as I said, if you want to support Sell to Help on Patreon, it's patreon.com forward slash Stephen Beal. If you enjoyed this video and you like more, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe and I'll see you in another video or over on selltohelper.com. Thanks a lot and good luck on your Celta journeys.